I request Shri S. Srivamathan sir to please be seated on stage as our panelist for the next panel discussion on transport infra financing public private partnership. Mr. Shivamathan joined BMRCL in September 2021. Prior to that, he was working as director of Maha Metro Rail Corporation and was there for five years. Prior to that, he worked with Delhi Metro Rail Corporation as general manager of finance. He worked with DMRC for 11 years. In DMRC, Mr. Shivamathan was also in charge of project appraisal by JICA for getting the bilateral loan fund assistance from government of Japan. I request Shri Rajesh Prasad, Director of Operations, RVNL, to please join us on stage. I request Mr. Rajneesh Ahuja, Head of Transport and Urban Development Team, AFD, to please join us. Mr. Rajneesh Ahuja is the Head of Transport and Urban Development, AFD. He is responsible for managing projects focusing on sustainable urban transport portfolio. Mr. Rajneesh has been actively involved in identification, appraisal, monitoring, implementation, and evaluation of AFD's project since January 2017 in urban transport sector, followed by leading the task related to decentralized ex-post evaluation and ex-ante evaluation of metro projects. He is also managing the project related to smart cities as head of urban development team. May I please request Mr. Narendra Shah, Founder and Managing Editor, Metro Rail News, to join us as a moderator of the session. Let's welcome our panelists and moderator. Let's start the session. Over to you, Mr. Narendra. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, uh, Mr. Sivanathan and Mr. Ahuja, thank you so much for joining to discussing the very, uh, you know, a need of our issues like the PPT and uh, what are the cost cutter, uh, cost cutting measures can be taken to you know, make the metro more sustainable. Uh, Mr. Sivanatham have uh, some presentation, I think. So uh, I, I request to kindly, kindly play the uh, presentation of the Sivanatham, sir. Yeah, yeah, you can go then. Very good afternoon. I, uh, at the outset, I would like to express my sincere thanks to Metro Rail News uh, for inviting me for uh, this uh, big occasion as uh, one of the panelists. So I will be talking on transport infra financing, PPP, increased every system, and uh, cost cutting measures to make the Metro Rail system financially sustainable in the long run. See, we have grown from the age of, from the year 2000, sorry, 1995 when DMRC was born. Many metro rail projects in many cities have come up. We can see that uh, except these last two years, whatever has happened because of COVID, before that and after this, whether the metro, metro rail system will become financially viable and what are the measures we should take practically to see that metro should come up in every city, every state, so that movement of people from one place to another is seamless. Next one. How to operate this? See, I'll be covering these are the, my presentation structure includes existing modes of SPV for metro rail projects in India, all you may be aware. Then options under new metro policy 2017. Just to have a glimpse of uh, idea, what, what is the cost per kilometer of various modes of metro rail system in India? Then there were some working group of urban transport 12th plan. They came out with some conclusion about PPP in metro rail sector, particularly because 
as you all aware that battery projects are capital intensive whether ppp mode is viable or not then i will talk about international experience with regard to generation of non firebox revenue what are the measures they have taken and how much they are earning if you see from total top line what is the earning they are uh, non non firebox revenue they are generating then we will see what are the options for firebox and non firebox revenue indian metro rail experience funding of capex and non fire generation revenue see these are the model models everybody know 50 50 is predominantly implemented in india starting from delhi metro and all the metros which are coming up in today's scenario are 50 50 with the government of india and concerned state government there are another model under percentage funded by government of india that is kolkata east west west metro rail it is 100 percentage owned by government of india there is no state participation then there are uh, 100 percentage owned by state government like uh, jaipur metro mumbai mono rail and sidco sidco is still coming up not at commission it has taken more more than 11 years then ppp mumbai metro line 1 is one of the example hyderabad metro lnt then pune metro recently they have awarded one 23.3 kilometer metro to tata siemens consortium it is under construction just work started then under percentage funding by private consortium rapid metro gurgaon but ultimately it was transferred to delhi metro because of its financial difficulties now we will see what are the options available as per the new metro rail act 2017 we can go for brts system that is not uh, rail based but uh, mrts system then light rail tramway metro rail regional rail metro neo metro neo concept has just uh, come up recently we will see how uh, what is the cost and in which cities it is more suitable because high, high capacity metro rail system is not suitable for every city we have to seek from sustainability point of view which mode of metro or uh, mass transit system is best suited so based on this one can take a decision see high capacity metro similar to delhi metro or bangalore metro the elevated cost per kilometer is 250 kilo 50 crore per kilometer this is based on the benchmarking cost done by the mova which is the line ministry duly escalated on date and if you see the underground the cost per kilometer is around 450 to 500 kilometer depending upon geological condition in bangalore this uh, the soil condition such that the cost of underground construction is very high i rather there it is more than 500 crore then we can uh, see the light metro rail system it is basically tram 150 to 200 crore per kilometer metro neo Ma maha metro maharashtra metro rail corporation worked out the dpr according to that the cost per kilometer is 70 to 80 kilometer completion cost not the estimated cost completion cost so basically it's a Troll, trolley type uh, system the people who are in uh, tier 2 tier cities can have the feeling of metro it is basically bus system but electric bus if uh, it will give the sense of uh, traveling in a metro then mono rail predominantly as tourist attraction except mumbai it can be used in amusement park or within the airport like singapore airport and all so these are the various uh, modes and uh, this is the cost comparison based on that the planners can make a uh, take a view which type of transport system they need to make the system financial viable in the longer run we can construct the metro today because everybody will pump even funding agency will come and give the money but whether the system will able to sustain in the longer run that we have to see so from the perspective of ppp the uh, working group of urban transport for 12th plan they concluded that global experience in urban uh, rail transport show that ppp in metro rail project have not been very successful in 132 city they have analyzed the report they came to the conclusion that 88 percentage of the metro rail projects are implemented on pp uh, public sector project pub as a public sector and only in uh, 12 percentage of the metro rail project some form of ppp is there not fully either in the form of uh, rolling stock they have provided or uh, some other system not complete uh, ppp except in india because in india this reliance and uh, hyderabad city hyderabad metro these are the two full fledged metro project taken up on ppp 
in nowhere in the world has attempted to provide metro rail and ttp project so this shows that because the metro rail sector project is so um, socially uh, very attractive but financially it is not so attractive so new metro rail projects being developed or largely being taken up under public sector mode this is the conclusion of 12th uh, that is the working group on to urban transport raising funds for metro rail project when it comes to raising finance the what needs to be done is that we have to capture the benefit of uh, metro going to particular city so that more and more value capture is taking place that is through land value capturing permitting in this concept i would like to say that permitting extra flow space index fsi along the metro corridor is a method being tried tried in the state of maharashtra see maharashtra after this maharashtra metro rail project came up they implemented a policy called tod wherein they came out with a conclusion that they, they came out with a policy that in whichever the city in the state of maharashtra wherever vital infrastructure project is being developed there they said that one percentage additional stamp duty will be levied and that will be given to those project to meet the operating uh, requirement and secondly they implemented additional fsi sale on either side 500 meter on either side of the alignment what they are doing is they are uh, selling the fsi depending upon road width and uh, uh, plot size and whatever the accrual is there what they are doing is 50 percentage of that accrual is given directly to the ma metro in the case of nagpur and pune and the rest 50 percentage is shared by nagpur municipal corporation or pune municipal corporation so this is the way in which we have to see see constructing metro is one part so making the system viable in the longer run because operationally if you take any metro jaipur metro nagpur metro the ridership is hardly 30 40000 per day and even if i take 10 rupees as the average fare 40 40 40000 4 lakh is the per day collection or 5 lakh is the per day collection even if i take for the full month it, it is less than 1 crore whereas the operating expenditure is more than 10 to 12 crore so to meet this gap we should have this kind of system so that the system is not affected or the efficiency is not affected because of non availability of funds in hong kong metro where land ownership is concentrated in india it is not concentrated direct contribution as public funding in metro is only 10 to 15 percentage of the total capital cost even in hong kong where we call it as a very successful uh, model of metro there the land through from uh, pd they are getting about 10 to 15 percentage the french authorities have also set up a public transport finance system known as the transport tax this is being collected from all the employers companies and administration both public and private sector where the number of employees is more than nine so similar kind of revenue generation regular revenue generation system can be implemented in metro uh, in all the states so that wherever they are implementing the metro project it should become viable or it should get funding from these sources now let us uh, take uh, because the topic given to us is that uh, how to raise the revenue to make the metro rail system financially viable we fix the international experience tokyo metro uh, in uh, 2015 as a part of uh, fourth fair fixation committee of delhi metro i along with the committee member visited tokyo and we extensively studied their uh, balance sheet and discussed uh, had a discussion so tokyo metro generates about 15 percentage of its revenue from non fair box revenue if i see delhi metro b- before covid they were about 19 to 20 percentage compared to that their non fair box revenue is 15 percentage but their fair box revenue is so much because they have to use pushers to uh, pull uh, push every passenger into the system so but but they are exhaustively using the premises uh, train set and all the spaces available for advertisement like renting a building for office hotel apartment parking area vending machine credit card operation advertisement inside and outside the train everything they are doing then in uh, apart from that advertisements in the area some in some area they have displayed very big advertisement so according to the charge so similar thing we can a uh, uh, attempt here in uh, india so that the non fair box revenue is maximized if i take the take the mtr hong kong it was the it is the uh, it is the listed uh, metro rail company 
in october 2024 percentage of the issued share capital was held by private shareholders only 70 percentage of the shareholding is with the government of hong kong non fair box revenue is about 43 percentage non fair box revenue how it is they are doing special commercial business that is similar to what uh, dmrc is doing property business or property development 18 percentage that is from rental from shops duty free shops advertising telecommunication this is being done in our delhi metro bangalore metro every metro in india is doing property and management business this is another uh, future of hong kong metro from that they are earning about 15 percentage of total revenue they are earning profit on development and sale of residential property. They are constructing residential or commercial properties and selling and earning profit. Holding investment properties with shopping malls and offices and property management. And again, wherever they have constructed the residential or commercial building, they are maintaining also. Through that also they are earning revenue. Other business is about 8 percentage because they, apart from metro, they are operating cable car operation, octopus card system. Through that also they are generating funds. So similar thing we can attempt. Mainland, uh, similar to what DMRC is doing deposit work, they have executed Kochi Metro and Jaipur Metro on deposit basis. They are also doing similar business to, uh, and they are earning net revenue to the extent of 2%. So if I add everything, their non fair box revenue is to the tune of 43% and the 57% is from fair box revenue. So the, we have to aim to achieve similar kind of revenue to make the metro rail system financially sustainable then how the new, whenever they go for new metro line in the city of hong kong what is the system they are following for the new lines and extension of existing line the capital cost is fully met by mtr because they are getting the land free of cost from government from that they are developing residential commercial and selling and through that they are meeting provided the firr financial internal rate of return of that extension of that metro rail project is more than the threshold fixed by the uh, Hong Kong government. In case the FIRR less than that uh, threshold, then government of uh, Hong Kong step in. The MTR is meeting the cost of replacement assets from its own revenue. They are not depending on government of Hong Kong. Now we'll come to, uh, that is the international experience, how to enhance the fare box re uh, revenue. What we need is growth in passenger numbers year after year. See, whenever we prepare the DPR, whenever we appoint the consultant, we make the DPR in such a manner that the project is uh, giving a fair of more than 8 percentage, more than 10 percentage. But at the end of the day, when we actually start operating the system, the FIR is less than 2 percentage or even uh, negative. So my suggestion is that over the planner year, over the, from state government also and uh, the SPV authorities, Whenever we appoint the consultant, we have to sit along with him and we have to tell where the station is to come. Station has to locate near the school, near the college, near the metro railway station, so that the multimodal integration cost we are going to incur will be less and it will attract more passengers uh, to our system. Then group booking for school and colleges and tourists. In Nagpur, what, have, what we done when I was Dag uh, director of finance in Nagpur, the radish was very less initially. And we put our, we send our uh, officers to various school colleges and big companies and told them instead of running your own school buses, you advise your students to travel by metro and you put your bus for pickup and drop near to our station. So through that, we increase our uh, ridership. Pricing strategy for peak and non peak In Delhi metro it is there, similar system should be there in every metro. In Delhi, during uh, off-peak hours, they are giving 10 percentage more discount. So similar system, so that the system is not idle, it attracts more passengers, and at the end of the day, the SPV earns more revenue than what it was. Encourage schools, colleges, to metro that I have already spoken. Provision of first and last mile connectivity. So here, one is this, another is we have to in, uh, speak to the uh, city bus and uh, advise them to run their buses as a complement to our system, not as a comp competitor. Otherwise, they will, uh, they will also lose their ridership, we will also going to lose the ridership. In uh, Nagpur, what we have done, that the Apli, Apli bus, that uh, NMC buses is there, we discussed with them and we told them, up, instead of uh, running parallelly, you, bring, you uh, run your buses diagonally, so that you bring uh, passengers to our system. In that uh, process, you will also going to gain and we will also going to gain. 
then dedicated connectivity to commercial enterprises, bus stand, railway station, mall through elevated. So this, we can reduce the capex also. How? In Bangalore, what you have done, when now we are doing the phase two of about 72 kilometers, 75 kilometers. Wherever the Infosys is there, Biocan is there, Vipro is there, the, we, are, we are positioning our station near to their uh, offices. So that for providing connectivity, they are contributing the capex and also maintaining the station. So through this process, we can reduce the cost of construction and also operating cost. Growth in base fare structure may be having automatic fare revision formula subject to de deduction in efficiency. In India, the main problem is we are not increasing the fare for years together. Even Delhi Metro, the, uh, the fare fixation committee, uh, fourth fare fixation committee happened after six, seven years. So during this period, cost goes up, but revenue will be flat. So we, it is better to have an automatic fare uh, revision formula similar to what, what is there in Hong Kong and Singapore. So strategy for enhance, uh, enhancing fare box revenue in uh, Nagpur Metro, what we have done was one kilometer Ambadiri Lake View gallery was constructed. It has to be commissioned, but uh, the gallery has been made. We are expecting some private operator to come and and uh, with this process, what we are aiming is that the passengers, at least uh, the people within Nagpur, can come to our, travel by our metro on weekend along with their family, come here and have chit chat and walk along and have uh, uh, refreshment and all. So through this process, our ridership can be increased and metro revenue can go up. Next one is strategy to enhance uh, non-fare box revenue. We can have the TOD or value capturing, depending upon uh, uh, the city requirement and state government uh, approval. See, this is one way of uh, raising firebox in Nagpur, what we have done. The up to fifth floor, uh, the platform is at fifth level, and above that 15-story building will be constructed on PPP model. We have the metro is operational at up to fifth level. And the foundation have, have been done to take care of the 15-story building. They are expecting some private operator will come, either hospital or five-star hotel uh, or some education institution. They will construct the 15-story building. And through this process, some revenue will accrue to Metro. Another is uh, to enhance non-fair box revenue, having this electric uh, vehicle charging, electric vehicle charging uh, at all the station or important stations so that Whenever the taxi comes, they can uh, get charged and we can add some our profit and earn non fare box revenue. What, uh, particularly for uh, SPVs and uh, state government official over is here, whenever the metro they propose, they can think of uh, this kind of TOD policy. In, uh, this has been done in Maharashtra. To make Nagpur metro financially viable, now the Pune metro is also becoming uh, getting the benefit. What they have done, they approved the TOD policy. As per that, they have approved additional FSI. If the road width is 9 meter and the plot area is up to 1,000 square feet, the admissible FSI is 2. So based on this, whatever the additional FSI is coming, 50 percentage to metro and 50 percentage to NMC. And also they have charged 1 percentage additional stamp duty. And in Ma uh, Nagpur alone, in two years, they collected 250 crore. Whereas in Pune, in one year, they collected 552 crore because it, it varied depending upon city's capacity. Similarly, Government of Karnataka, they also came out, they are proposing, this is in their uh, draft bill, TOD policy, levy cess and surcharge at the rate of 5% of the market value of land which shall be shared between three agencies so that all three agencies will work in tandem. And four FAR for all property lying within the distance of five, five meter, 500 meter, Levy assess at the rate of 10 and 20 percentage on the additional FAR granted. At, that will also be shared between four uh, state government authorities. Then BMRC will issue TDR in lieu of compensation. So this kind of innovative you know, financing strategy the state government can think of. Part funding of CapEx. See, BMRC contributed about 7, 8, 28 crore, about 7 percent of the CapEx from property development for phase one. Jaipur Metro put 12 and a half hectares of land for exclusive commercial development. Dial, this is part funding by PPP, Delhi International Airport Limited, they contributed about 458 crore to DMRC for construction of two stations, one, one, in, uh, one at Aero City, another within T3. BMRC and Bangalore International Airport have signed MOU with various agencies for 
and also other agencies for part funding the capex. These are as you see, in Bangalore Metro for phase two, we are generating about 1,537 crore by engaging various uh, private firms to part fund the capex. Infosys, they have agreed to give some 100 crore for one of the station. And apart from that, they are spending their own money to make this station international standard. And already they have released 70 crore. Embassy property, these are all the agreement we have already signed. Definitive agreement has already been signed. So only the thing is, when we plan metro, we have to take into account this kind of uh, development is possible, generation is possible. And uh, accordingly, if we work out the capex and uh, sustainability, the project will be get sanctioned from state government and government of India at the earliest. One more opportunity for uh, uh, reducing the OPEXs, uh, having the solar generation at station, at depot, wherever possible. Thank you. And if there's any question during the panelist discussion, I will share with you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Sivanathan. Uh, very insightful you know, presentation and uh, Almost I got all the answers, the, what are the query I have. Now we have Mr. Uh, Rajanis Ahuja, uh, Head of Transport and uh, Urban Development Team, uh, French Development Agency. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, all. Uh, thanks for inviting uh, AFT to this conference. So in fact, AFT uh, stands for Agence Française de Développement in French. In English, it's French Development Agency. It's a bilateral development bank on the same lines as uh, World Bank. Uh, the headquarters of AFT are in Paris. Uh, it was set up in 1942, and in India, we started our operations in 2008. So if you look at uh, our areas of intervention, uh, these are clearly energy, digital, uh, sustainable transport, and uh, social sectors, uh, not particularly in India, but in Africa. In terms of our operation, we are operating uh, in four continents, out of which uh, our continent, that is Asia, stands second, uh, where till date we have uh, almost uh, 2.1 billion euros invested. And specifically in uh, South Asia, we are operating right now in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka. Our operations in Afghanistan have stopped. So most of our operations, uh, they are 100% uh, in alignment with the Paris Agreement. And uh, when we assess our operations, we need to look at the gender criteria, which is according to the OECD gender framework. So in fact, uh, the regional priority for South Asia is uh, first to fight climate change by supporting low carbon transitions where we invest into metros, uh, projects with IREDA, then uh, preservation of natural resources. Uh, for this, uh, I can cite you an example of the project on biodiversity that we are doing it in uh, Rajasthan and uh, project on water distribution being done in Jodhpur. So uh, that's a repeat. Uh, that's actually the updated figure. Right now in India, we are standing at commitments amounting to 2.2 uh, billion euros. When I say commitments, these are commitments, but not uh, actually the disbursements, which are quite different. And India, is, uh, India stands second after Morocco in terms of AFT's commitments uh, throughout the world. So in terms of uh, India, uh, AFT's interventions in urban transport, we uh, are financing majorly metros in uh, India through mostly sovereign loans and non-sovereign loans for obvious reasons because they are a bit costlier. We have not been able to uh, close the deals on, on these. In fact, we are further looking at financing inter-urban rail projects. For example, uh, the upcoming projects in Bangalore on suburban rail could be looked at. Uh, financing model modalities for AFT uh, consist of project loan, uh, which we sign with Department of Economic Affairs. So it's actually a sovereign loan. 
Uh, in fact, uh, as I mentioned, in India, we have financed majorly metros, which uh, I shall be discussing in coming slides. And then we have program and sector loans. When I say program and sector loans, uh, I can cite an example of the loan that we have uh, with Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs to an amount of 100 million euros. It's based on city, uh, Smart Cities program, which is right now in implementation. Uh, so that's the track record that we have in MRT projects. Uh, and we are looking forward, and Mr. Sivamathan mentioned that there could possibly be Metro Neo projects or Metro Light projects. But in fact, uh, uh, till date, we are looking forward to receive any DPR for analysis of the same. So in terms of AFD's interventions uh, in uh, Metro space, we actually started our association uh, in India through Bangalore Metro. Uh, that was the first project that we financed. And in fact, we were associated with Bangalore phase one and phase two. So the total amount of financing has been 310 million euros. This is uh, commissioned. The same with Kochi, uh, 180 million euros for phase one, uh, which is right now operational, uh, was our intervention, second intervention in India. Right now, this 27 million euro loan uh, is ongoing in Kochi. It, it is on soft mobility measures, which in fact is focusing on improving first and last mile connectivity. Uh, this financing is on bridges, FOBs, etc. Uh, there are few loans which are ongoing. Uh, these include Nagpur Metro to an amount of 130 million euros. Uh, hopefully, I think uh, the whole Nagpur Metro will be operational by June or July, something like that, to this year. The second one is for Pune Metro. It is uh, ongoing. And our recent intervention, which we signed last year, was for Surat Metro to an, account, to an amount of 250 million euros. Uh, as Mr. Sivamathan mentioned, for PPPs, uh, these have been attempted but have not been successful. However, AFT has been able to do one uh, PPP project, not in India, but uh, in uh, Morocco, in uh, Casablanca. So in fact, this is how uh, it works in terms of AFT's financial pro uh, products. As, uh, as you may know, in a PPP, you have a private uh, company, and AFT, being a public finance institution, can't directly finance a private company. So for that, AFT's private financing arm, Proparco, takes care of that. And we do that through two instruments. One is through equity, for which the amount ranges from 1 to 20 million euros with a tenor of uh, 5 to 7 years. The second one is through commercial debt, for which amount increases and goes from 10 to 50 million euros with a maturity up to 15 years. And then AFT can put a part of it to the uh, public partner. So that's how it works uh, when AFT works into a PPP mode. So the ministry proposes a project idea to AFT. AFT studies the proposal, then uh, tries to find out how adequate it is to AFT strategy, which is available on AFT's website. Then the third step is to uh, go for the feasibility studies, which could be financed by AFT, feasibility assessment. Then uh, a financing application has to be made to AFT, to which AFT responds uh, through a term sheet. And then uh, a final study of uh, the request. So as you can see uh, over here, Proparco takes an equity stake in the sponsor this is just an example where Proparco is taking care of 70% of the request, and uh, AFT provides loan and technical assistance to an amount of 30% of the total amount to the SPV. However, Proparco finances the project. AFT only deals with the public entity. So uh, this was the feedback uh, from PPP uh, that we did. Uh, uh, a study for which we did a study in France. 77% of the French mayors have a good opinion of PPP. It has been worked out in uh, France. And usually, uh, uh, 
the tenor of these PPP uh, range from 20 to 30 years. Just as an example of uh, light rapid transit in REMS, the duration was for 30 years. It was a consortium between Elstom, who was the builder, Veolia Transdev uh, being the operator, uh, with a total investment of 345 million euros, and remuneration was through fair sales uh, and, annual pay uh, and 45 million euro annual payment for 160 buses. So in, uh, in Casablanca, this was the institutional setup that we had, whereby Moroccan state did put up 30% of the equity to Casa Transport local SPV. City of Casablanca did put 54% uh, of equity. And uh, for AFT, we just put 22 million euros on the same. So in fact, as well, it was a gross cost contract for Casablanca, which worked out uh, uh, really well and has been working well till date. So uh, the advantages of gross cost contract uh, in, uh, our, uh, in our financing in Casablanca are clearly uh, as follows. It allowed ULB to benefit from experience of uh, private operator for a greenfield project. Uh, the performance management actually by ULB is increased because they have to take care uh, and actually monitor the private operators. The third uh, advantage was uh, the operator committed on a level of O&M costs for a duration of uh, five years. This gives the ULB a good financial visibility. And the commercial ridership risk stays with ULB. Uh, that was the uh, uh, final uh, growth cost contract that we signed with the uh, city of Casablanca. And going forward, uh, as Mr. Sivamathan mentioned, we are looking forward to projects which are focusing more on end-to-end uh, -end connectivity, meaning uh, first to last mile. In fact, uh, with the introduction of Metro Rail policy, there have been a number of avenues that have come up. In fact, for example, in Surat Metro, they do have a tender amounting to 8 million euros focusing only on MMI, uh, which actually resonates with uh, uh, the Gati Shakti plan that Prime Minister Modi uh, mentioned off. And uh, these uh, MMI plans actually help in increasing the fare box revenue through increased uh, footfall. And we are looking forward uh, to explore alternative technologies for our financing. Uh, let it be suburban rails, let it be metro news, or uh, possibly e-buses. Well, thanks. Thank you, uh, Mr. Ahuja, for enlightening us with a very uh, informative session and the presentation you have. So, uh, we almost got the you know transport infra financing uh, with the uh, PPP mode. So, my my question is like, what are the other modes apart from PPP and the 50 joint venture? Uh, can be metro finance, maybe you know, uh, people's uh, like, uh, like the citizens of the uh, citizens of the country, or maybe the uh, peoples of the city can you know can participate while financing the metro project. So they can be emotionally you know attached with that project, and that helps to get ridership. The first one. A uh, second one. Uh, in terms of increased revenue system, will uh, will may may the metro operators can offer some kind of monthly passes, like the uh, the Lucknow Metro is recently uh, recently revealed that they have a super saver card, which is which cost the commuters is 1500 rupees, and uh, with having the 100 rupees security deposit. And that will have the unlimited pass for unlimited travel for 30 days. So that the the uh, my my two aspects are there. I mean, uh, you, you can answer uh, my Mr. Ahuja, I think, uh, for the you know other space to uh, uh, finance the metro project. Yeah. Thank, uh, thank you. Uh, on your first question related to PPP. In fact, uh, AF, as I mentioned, AFD has a mandate in India to intervene only through sovereign loans. No, you can uh, close the mic. Uh, AFD has a mandate in India 
to intervene only through sovereign loans. And that's why when I mentioned about the PPP, it's Proparco who takes care uh, of the private companies. So by law, we can intervene only uh, when a request directly comes from Department of Economic Affairs. And we can only uh, provide our financing to public uh, institutions. Okay, uh, so oh, and on your second question related to monthly passes, yes, yes. well, in fact, a number of uh, metro companies have done that, including Kochi Metro. Mm -hmm. It was successful for one, one and a half uh, month or possibly three months. But uh, there was a decrease in uh, footfall after that. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason for most of the metros with decrease in footfall is uh, when the DPRs are being uh, made, one needs to look at uh, the comprehensive mobility plan also mm -hmm. and possibly do a route rationalization study Multi-model transport. No, ra route rationalization study because so what is happening is metros are running on the same alignment uh, or on the same lines as buses. And just to give you an example, if you want to travel on, on, on metro for a distance of 5 kilometers, you would be paying uh, 30 to 40 kilometers, whereas on bus, you would be paying 7 to 8 kilometers. <laughs> Why would I take uh, any... Uh, uh, I mean, why would I go up, take a ticket, board the metro, come down, and rather not take a bus, which is, at, uh, which is an ad grade solution, which also brings us to one more question. Now we, most of the metros that we are encountering, they are either underground or elevated, which also is a pain point because the costs increase. If we have some section which is at grade, the costs drastically reduce. So possibly we can look at that kind of option. So once we look at these things in totality, this question comes second. <laughs> I mean, we can <laughs> most of the time look at these solutions like monthly passes or passes for students or elderly. So yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, got it. So uh, revenue enhancing measure uh, can be taken like the, I mean, Mr. Sima uh, Mathan already give uh, lots of case study and uh, uh, fair revenue, non-fair revenue. So, uh, you know, uh, taking, taking a heed that uh, uh, Mr. Ahuja said, that uh, we, uh, like the op options are there, we need to find out the way. Also, there is, there is need of, you know, certain uh, rules, like uh, if a car company manufacture a car, they, they have a certain rule that they can put the things like their brake, their steering, uh, in, and in such a place that, I mean, the car can be any, way, I mean, any company, but they have such a rule. So we thought that some kind of rules should be there to make the metro more sustainable. And also, of course, when we come to the costing of the project, the main, as per my knowledge, I might be wrong. So uh, may, the rolling stock is the main portion of the project and the civil infra, right? So when we're moving toward the metro light, so uh, the civil infra can be, you know, uh, reduced uh, by, uh, we are not going to use the, you know, uh, the tunnels or the uh, other, other things to, you know, so, so we, can, we can move toward the metro light. Yeah, rolling stock is there, that can be light as well. So um, we, uh, from where we can uh, cut the cost, right, and increase the, our revenue, through the you know monthly passes and uh, uh, first mile uh, providing the first mile last mile connectivity, so now we'll we'll take the questions from the audience uh, for the panel. Yeah. Can I have mic, please? Just uh, one addition to your point mm -hmm. in terms of reduction of the total cost of the project. Mm -hmm. uh, on the technical point of view, you can always look at reduction on different packages, let's say signaling, telecom, rolling stock. But then again, uh, the variations do come in future. However, uh, there have been a number of metros which have done some things, uh, some things which are quite innovative. For example, you have an alignment which is in the DPR. You may revisit the alignment, tweak it a bit, 
try to reduce the number of PAFs and PAPs. When I say PAFs and PAPs, it means project affected families slash project affected persons. Mm -hmm. As soon as you reduce them, the R and R costs decrease and try to, uh, you can try to reduce the number of private acquisition. That's where your costs can actually come down. A number of uh, metros are now looking at uh, doing this. And I, if I can quote, uh, Surat Metro has done this work quite beautifully. Okay. Yes, sir, your question. So, my question to the panel is, as per Metro Rail Policy 2017, there are three financial models suggested by Government of India. The first model is uh, Government JV model. The second one is uh, VGF PPP model. And the third one is state financing model. The first two are understood because this is already well-defined models. When it comes to third one, they suggested that parts of the uh, project can be given on PPP and whatever the remaining portion state government takes in that 10% of that investment will be funded or will be assisted by the central government. Shivamadhanji, is it correct? So now that, now that, say stations we have given to uh, one uh, company and the rolling stock to another, the viaduct is company C and the uh, AFC, automatic uh, fare collection system and others, is company D. Four companies have participated and they invested into that project. And not only the capex, but they have to OM also they have to do. So the OM varies. So how come we the revenues, how they will distribute among themselves? Is there any formula we have tried to do it? What you, are, what you are talking is uh, sharing the revenue, revenue by the four PPP yes, operators. Any investment anybody puts, he wanted to take back his money. Definitely. Uh, revenues. So here, how the revenues will be uh, apportioned between these uh, four people? So, if I understand your question properly, uh -huh. you, are, you are asking me that to do the project, you have appointed four consortium. On PPP model. Right. Okay? No, it's yeah, yeah. not like that four. It is not completely private. Okay. If the privately one person will be the uh, lead, lead, lead member, partner, lead, partner. lead partner, and the others will be, that is again PPP. It's not that. If you read the Metro Policy 2017, uh, that para, they said stations you can give it to uh, on PPP basis, AFP, uh, AFC can be given or the rolling stock can be given. So something can be taken by the state government itself. If somebody is not uh, coming uh, forward to do that, to invest, so state government can take it. So after that, uh, once it comes to operations, how the revenues will be apportioned between these four? Okay, <laughs> you are asking practical question. See, what government of India, the new metro policy says is that, they will give 10 percentage contribution as a grant on right. the total cost excluding PPP component. Mm -hmm. So whatever the state government going to bear from its pocket on that, government of India will give its contribution as 10 percentage. Rest of the amount has to be contributed by the state government as a equity or right. mixer of HD, whatever. Sure, whatever. sure. Now comes to the sharing of revenue once it is made operational. Right. Some part is being done by state government, some part is done by the private operator. Right. See, that has to be defined in the consortium agreement, the concession agreement, on what basis he is going to share. Most, more, more uh, uh, I would think, I would uh, suggest that it should be based on the investment made by all the four entities. Let us say government of Andhra Pradesh is doing some investment, so let us take 10,000 crore the investment, 5,000 crore is being contributed by state government. Rest 5,000 crore is by four uh, consortium. If you think that whether this metro going to bring profit, shareable profit, 
then only the question of sharing among right. all the four entities will come. Or let us assume since private operator is coming to invest the money, which means the project is profitable, and if there is a shareable profit, it can be in the ratio of uh, the investment, in, in proportion of investment made. Right. But Ex it is general but actually, whatever no. you invested, you get the revenue in the portion. <laughs> uh, no, Mr. Narendra, here it is not only investment capex, this is O&M is also there. When O&M comes, so the station maintenance is much more costlier than AFC or some other this thing. Okay. When how we'll make it, so till now it was not uh, uh, clear, so nobody has come forward to do such thing because everybody will see that uh, his investment he has to get uh, return, even more return or at least a reasonable return out of the money he put it and also uh, to through OLM. So I feel, I feel there is a need for a bit amendment in the, this state model, yes. somewhat clarified by the government of India, the policy needs some amendment and the platforms like this will help us because if we, uh, we discuss, so we can uh, suggest them a better uh, way of formula because in 2017, this policy has come. Today, it is 220 to 5 years or over, but nobody could attempt that third model, only first and second models only. Because of this, uh, no clarity. There is a lot of ambiguity in this. So, uh, it, it's a brainstorming session so that we can With, okay. suggest to the government of India. Not, not that, uh, is, uh, that is one question. So, okay, uh, after that, I'll go to the question two. Yeah. Mr. Rao, uh, we will we'll take your concern with this forum to the relevant authority for right. sure, sure and we will make sure that the amendment need to be made in the next uh, policies as well. Uh, so and, we are… And, and, and uh, can I make one more question? Yeah, yeah, please sir. Do you allow me? <laughs> we so, are running with the time, so but yeah. This is, uh, to Mr. <laughs> this is to Mr. Rajneesh, uh, that PPP model what you have given in Morocco, can we give, extend it to India also? So here, the PPP model, there are three uh, partners. So government of India, anyway, they will give as a grant. And state uh, government has to put and 20 percent and that 60 uh, percent by a private developer. Okay. Here, G2G and G2B are there. According to you, G2G is a sovereign guarantee. It can be given by AFD. That's a small amount, 20, but 60 percent is a, a larger amount. Uh, G2B Proparco can give it or, uh, because we have readily, Vizag project is there. We can discuss if it is, uh, if you are serious. So, in fact, a Vizag project was discussed uh by your predecessor in 2017 and 2018. Uh, when we talk about the PPP component, uh, our private financing arm, Proparco, looks at the amount. If at all, they will be able to put in the total amount or else there, there, is a, there would be a need for syndicate. And then, in fact, the steps that I showed in terms of due diligence, those all would be undertaken it takes around uh, six to eight months and totally depends upon the SPV, uh, SPV's readiness in terms of DPRs, in, uh, in terms of uh, alternative yeah. analysis yeah. and everything. Yes, yes. Those things are ready. Those, those things are re ready. But only thing whether uh, the AFD plus Proparco is ready to fund any PPP, not only Vizag, maybe any other uh, metros, uh, because now in the tier two cities, the phase two are coming. Even for Lucknow also, they are venturing the uh, phase two. Then the government of India is suggesting to go for PPP because it is difficult for the government, even the state government, to bear the entire thing. Uh, so they are uh, encouraging for uh, private participation. So in that, uh, Vizag or any other uh, city in India, the Proparco plus AFD can uh, help us like you have helped in Morocco. 
Thank Only you. here the problem what I am envisaging is that once you are taking foreign currency loan for doing the PPP project by the SPV, the loan amount which you are going to repay will be unlimited because of exchange rate variation. Whether that project is still viable, even if we assume exchange rate will be from here to there, that you have to examine. So next question. In the conventional way, in the conventional way, we th think that uh, fair box revenue is 10 percent, uh, 90 percent, and other than fair box revenue is 10 percent. But now the days have come, it has to go to 25 percent, and that has to come 75 percent. In the PPP models, we are uh, giving extra land, government land, for property de development, and uh, the revenues out of this extra land can also be taken to as a revenues for the developer. Thank you, Mr. Rao. I think we'll get the next question. So we close the session that we are uh, uh, running the time sir. as well. Uh, uh, I have got a specific question from Mr. Uh, Director of Finance, BMRCL. You told that we evaluate the project on the sustainability. My question can be treated as an RTI question. What are the different factors and parameters by which you ensure the project is sustainable? Number one. Number two, if the project is sustainable, then you are considering what amount of years, 10 year, 20 year, 30 year, or 50 year, up to what year you want to make it sustainable? Kindly clarify. As per the, see, I'm not going based on my own assumption. I'm going based on the new Metro Rail Act 2017. It says any project to be sent to Government of India for approval, it should have the FIRR of positive, not less than 2 percentage. So minimum threshold is 2. And EIRR of more than 14 percentage. So these are the criteria based on which Government of India evaluates and gives the approval. One. Second, second question. Uh, for how many number of years? Number of years, normally it is for 30 years duration, including five years for construction. So five year construction plus 25, 30 years time horizon we take for the purpose of deriving this FIR. So you mean to say after 30 years, you will stop the metro? It is not that. See, for your financing model, when you work out, after 30 years, NPV, in terms of NPV, the value will be very... Your pa that. panel partner has already told that whatever DPR you are making, they are all false DPR. It they may be are, true, it may be they, true. It they, may be because they I had are not giving the PSPD for which you are making the DPR. And for DPR also, you are having one consultant who is more interested in taking the money out of you, out of the consultancy, instead of saying you the DPR. Actually, whatever DPR you are making, if you wa actually want to see it financially, it may not be viable. So my question still arises the same thing, whether sustainability, when you say sustainability, it is overall sustainability or it is only financial sustainability? See, ultimately any project, you prepare any DPR, it's whether it is to be implemented or not to be implemented will be based on financial criteria only. So you have to make the project viable. Consultant, as you say, correct, yes. Because we also, as a SPV or as a uh, promoter, we sit along with them and make, uh, make the FIR like this. But what I am suggesting is that to make the project really viable, financially viable in the longer run, we have to sit across with the consultant. We, are, we should also visit the site. We should tell him where the exact station is to be required. Whether we should go for underground or elevated. As Mr. Auja told, we should not, uh, just for the sake of constructing metro, we should not construct. Wherever it is required. Suppose there are a lot many houses have to be demolished, properties have to be demolished, huge R&R costs will be, will be involved. So to avoid that, whether to go for elevated or underground, in Delhi metro, what happened during phase two, it was actually planned for underground, then finally, because of uh, this uh, huge uh, resettlement, this and thing, cut and cover, which was there, 
it was converted into elevated. In somewhere, it was elevated, it was converted into underground during the execution stage, though it was approved as elevated or underground. So this kind of flexibility has to be there. See, DPR is only the Bible. But at the time of preparation of the DPR, we as the promoters sit along with the consultant, tell him where exactly you want uh, station, in, near to the school, near to the college, near to the railway station, near to the bus stand, so that going forward our, the cost which we are going to incur towards multimodal integration or first mile, last mile connectivity is avoided. And also we should take into account the, uh, the various stakeholders like in the case of Delhi, DTC or any other agency so that they, their operation should, be, should not be competitive to our metro. They should complement and at the end of the day they should also get more passenger and we should also get more passenger. And if with this uh, spirit, if we prepare the DPR, engage the consultant, then definitely the system will be viable. As you said, 30 years is only for the purpose of FIRR. But even Company Act says that uh, depreciation has to be worked out based on life of the asset. Life of the asset is, uh, as you said, it is more than 100 years. The system will be there. But to take a decision today, we should take some period, uh, whether it is 20, 20 year, 25, 30. But normally in metro sector, it is taking, we are taking 30 years. No, when you have, we, it's not like, they're not like, when you prepare the DPR, you have to take into account additional investment which you are going to invest after uh, 15 years, after 20 years and also you are, Taking care of our rolling stock requirement today, population is increasing, ridership will increase, and accordingly you have to augment your rolling stock requirement. That should also to be factored in while preparing the DPR. I am not telling you take only 30 years. Sir, in fact, it should be sustainable till uh, the metro will be there. It should be sustain sustainable up to that period only. See, for taking decision, we have to take certain, some, some period. Whether it is 30 or 100, it is a debatable point. But to take the decision and take the project approval from various authorities, 25 to 30 years is being taken on. I can add it here. We, the uh, FIRR is calculated yes. taking 30 years as the period. So it does not mean that that uh, uh, system will end up there itself. Yes. So within 30 years, if some uh, FIRR is coming, so then we can go ahead. In fact, for metros, they have taken out that FIRR. Earlier it was 8%, now they have taken out, telling only the EARR, the Economic Internal Rate of Return, which is socio-economic analysis we have to make. With that, if it is 14% and above, you can take up the metro project. So this is the dictum given by the government of India. So because generally some period we have to take, this 30 years period is the uh, presently the period taken by either by Indian Railways or by Metro Railways. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Rao. Uh, thank you, Mr. Raghu uh, for your uh, questionings and uh, adding the value in the panel discussion. So uh, with my closing remark, uh, I want to say that uh, if uh, like we need to focus on other modes of uh, other modes of financing the project, also uh, to cut the uh, uh, cut the cost of project, we need to uh, we need to uh, take the uh, decisions and also uh, in in terms of viability of the project, we need to uh, you know we, we we need to also consider the social economic benefit benefit of the project as well, apart from the financing, right. So, and like uh, we have a pollution, we have, we are uh, aim for net zero carbon emission, we, we want to bring the people who are in, already have a car. So, we need to provide the first mile, last mile connected for them to bring the car and also that need to be, you know, uh, like uh, we use some monthly pass system, so, you know, they, once they have paid, they, they need to, uh, they can use, and they, once they are, uh, uh, they are uh, used to like commit with the metro, they comfort with the metro because we have a very uh, best world class system in our country, across the country. So, 
uh, we, we uh, uh, thank you so much, Mr. Rahuja and Mr. Sivamathan for your uh, insightful view and thank you, audience. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. May I please request Mr. Sanjay, Mr. Sanjay Nandanwar from Jindal Steel and Power to kindly join us on stage to present the memento to Shri S. Shivamathan. Can we please request Mr. Sanjay from Jindal Steel and Power to please join us on stage? Meanwhile, I also request Mr. Gaurav Jain from Adinath Industries to please join us on stage. We request Mr. Rao to please join us on stage to present the mementos. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. Can I please request Mr. Ankush Bhandari from E plus E Electronic to please join us on stage to present the memento. He's there. Thank you so much.